Imagine this, you parked your car in front of your favorite store, Costco. It's my favorite store, it's my safe haven. I feel at home, not in my car, but in the Costco parking lot. It is a spot where I just feel at peace with myself, with the world. I just feel one with the place. You get out of your car, you approach the bouncer at the Golden Gates. The bouncer, if you will, asks for your ID to enter. You get in the store, and you walk down the chips aisle and you pick up your favorite bag of chips. At the very bottom corner, you see a little sign that says, The Non-GMO Project. Oh my god! What is that? Hmm. You don't think about it too much. But non-GMO. Not really sure what GMO stands for. Genetically modified. Genetically modified. Genetically manufactured. General modified ingredient. Because there's the word non in front of it. GMOs must be bad, right? I won't think too much about it. And you just kind of let it subside. And over time, you never really looked into GMOs. And you kind of associated GMOs as being bad. Terrible for your health. What is a GMO? I know it's like some corn bad stuff, right? <laughs> I know it's bad. It's not bad for you. So that's why I'm making this video today to kind of just debunk some myths about GMOs. To do that, I'm going to give you 15 interesting facts about GMOs or genetically modified organisms. So genetically modified organisms can refer to a whole bunch of things, but in the context of food, we're talking about crops that have had their DNA genetically altered. That was very repetitive. DNA altered to express a specific trait. GM or genetically modified foods are safe to eat. Point blank period per. Mm. GMOs have been available for commercial purchase since the early 1990s, allowing farmers to increase crop production through bioengineering that creates herbicide resistant and insect resistant varieties. I think what creates a lot of fear in the public is fear of the unknown. There is obviously a miscommunication between scientists and the general public. So fear from the general public stems from the notion that GMOs are bad for your health and that we're Frankensteining our foods, that we're getting gene from this bacteria and we're adding it to this plant, we're going to make a monster out of it and that overall GMOs are poisonous. That's all absolutely untrue. Many consumers report that they receive information about GMO food products through the media, the internet, and other news sources. In fact, 57% of the general public think that GMOs are unsafe to eat. The reality of it is that almost everything we eat has been genetically modified. Through selective breeding, humans have genetically modified food for thousands of years. We do this to enhance specific traits like flavor, texture, color, pest and disease resistance, drought tolerance, and so on. Believe it or not, but watermelons used to look like this, and corns like this, and bananas like this, and, um, uh, and carrots like this. Some of the more common genetically modified crops are corn, soybean, cotton, and canola. The US is a top producer of GM foods, followed by Brazil and then Argentina. Don't cry for me, Argentina. The long-term goal of GMOs is to mitigate climate change by bioengineering plants that can suck in the carbon dioxide in the air, making crops drought resistant, solving world hunger, and increasing crop yields. Am I slouching again? I'm slouching, aren't I? Some of the first genetically modified plants got a gene from the petunia plant called that. Let me look this up. It is called the enzyme 5 phenopyrrole shikimate 3 phosphate synthase. Whew, that's a mouthful. Or EPSPS for short. So in the lab, these petunia cells can be made to resist a type of chemical called glyphosate, which is in weed killers. So if you're a plant, you hate glyphosate. So by putting this resistant EPSPS petunia gene inside of a plant or a crop like soybean, the soybean will become herbicide resistant. So you can use herbicides to kill weeds and it won't affect the crops. We also use a gene from a bacteria called Bacillus thuringiensis, or BT for short. Not BTS, but BT. One gene in BT makes proteins that kills crop-eating caterpillars. We drew one of you dying because our teacher said it would be more dramatic. And by putting this gene into plants, you have a plant that has a built-in insecticide. You're probably wondering, is it okay to eat this? Here's the thing, we've been eating for organic foods that have been sprayed with BT liquids and powders for years, and scientists have shown no evidence of sickness or infection as a result of exposure. 698 reports showed that GM crops do not carry a greater risk than other types of genetic modifications. The topic of GMOs can be a little controversial because people claim that it's it's 
it's it's unnatural. Yeah! You know what's not natural, but is accepted by society? Selective breeding in dogs. Yeah? Pugs used to look like this. The pug was selectively bred to feature an extremely flat face, which contributes to breathing difficulties and eye injuries. For this last fact, I'm gonna bust a nut. Bust a myth. Become a myth buster. Bust a rhymes. Bust all these myths. First myth. GMOs can change your DNA when you consume them and can cause cancer. No. No, 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 no. No, that's a completely false and untrue. Myth number two. GMOs have not been adequately tested for safety, and that's completely false. GMOs are actually heavy regulated compared to their non-GMO counterparts. In fact, it costs about $130 million and 13 years for a new GM crop to be brought to the market. And this involves a comprehensive safety and environmental review by all these different organizations around the world. Ooh, this one's a doozy. Myth number three, GMOs cause cancer, autism, allergies, gluten intolerance, and other illnesses. This is, this is false. In the past 30 years, GMOs have not contributed to a single illness or death. GMOs are a major tool to help us combat several issues like vitamin A deficiency and world hunger. But it can only be useful if we overcome this science miscommunication and adequately educating the public about GMOs. Like plant scientist Pamela Ronald has said during her TED talk, what scares me most about the loud arguments and misinformation about plant genetics is that the poorest people, the people who most need the technology, may be denied, denied access, access because, because of the vague fears and prejudices of those who have enough to eat. Alrighty guys, that concludes this video. As always, if you learned something, please like, subscribe, and also turn on the bell notification. Oh, my shout out this week. This week's shout out goes to Jazze. Jazze. The princess is here. Congratulations, you are the winner of Lab Shenanigans merch. If you want a chance to win free Lab Shenanigans merch, comment down below a corn emoji. And if you guys have a chance, please check out my Lab Shenanigans merch website. I spent the last week heavily editing the photos. Also, thank you guys for submitting your photos. I tried to include as many as I could. If you want to be included on my website, just email me. Just, just reach out to me, okay? All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Still don't have reason. Work, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do this. Yeah, I'm gonna do this. <laughs>